edition of the penguin paint along this is where we're gonna end up but first we have our canvas um, we are going to have our canvas in a vertical so remember that means the long sides are up and down okay so it's almost like a portrait style my table is easy to clean um, it's a work table so I do not have a messy mat underneath but if you have a messy mat or a tablecloth that can get paint on it that is what we want to do first the supplies we are going to need are paintbrush a cup of water um, a pencil is going to be super helpful today. Now, when you see me do this, I'm going to be using a Sharpie. I want to make sure that you see the lines that I'm drawing, but I do want you to use pencil for yours. The first two colors we're going to need on our plate are white and blue. You don't have to pour all of the colors on, just a little bit to get us started. As you um, get new paint, you can just keep adding it to your um, your tray, okay? Um, so just a little bit to get started and then have that grown up help you to get more as we need it. Same with the water. Now, I have a lot of experience with this, so I keep my water. I I can do this pretty easily. If you want to clean out your water in between each drying section, that's totally fine. Just make sure your grown up is there to help you. Another super important tool is that paper towel. We're going to be using that paper towel to make sure that our brush is cleaned. Let's talk about that brush, the tippy toe of the paintbrush. We don't want to hurt our paintbrush. Ouch! So we don't want to push down. We want to be on the tippy toe of the paintbrush. Don't break the bristles. They could snap and then you can't use the paintbrush in anymore. So let's make sure we're really gentle with our paintbrush as we begin. As always, we want to soften those bristles before we get started. So gently tap, tap, tap at the bottom and make sure you got all your supplies. And here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is do our background. We're going to do the entire thing, so we're going to take up space on our canvas. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush and I want to soften those bristles. So just gently press it to the bottom of your cup and then you can wipe off the excess water on your paper towel. Now, I'm going to blend right on my canvas. I really like how it blends when I blend right on my canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of make a little line of my blue. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to take some of my white. And I'm going to blend back and forth all the way to the edges of my canvas. Now you might want to use a messy mat at home. So you could put either paint on a table, um, on a piece of paper, an additional piece of paper, or um, on a tablecloth would be a good idea. So you're just going to keep going back and, back and forth. I'm grabbing a little bit of blue. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white and I'm going to keep blending it back and forth. Now you see how that blue right there is not blending very well. I could even just dip my paintbrush in a little bit of water and that will help it smooth out. Now what we don't want is we don't want clumps of paint because then it's going to take too long to dry. So if you have really big clumps of paint, you want to make sure that you smooth it out going back and forth in that rainbow shape. Now I like how this is a nice transition for me, but maybe you kind of want a snow storm effect. So you could X. If you want to, you could do those X's back and forth. If you like the way that looks, you could definitely do that too. But for me, I'm going to make sure it's nice and smooth. 
and they have some transition of color, some lighter blue, some darker blue. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit darker up on top, so I'm going to add a lot more blue up on top. And I want to take it all the way up and off my canvas. So I have a nice darker transition at the top. Now we're going to do something very similar down below, but this time I'm going to use more white. I want more of a sky blue at the top, so I'm going to clean out my brush. And I know I put just a little bit of um, white on my uh, uh, on our paper plate, so that's okay if it still has a little bit of blue in there. I'm going to tap, tap, tap my water, and then just gently clean your bristles. And now I'm going to take the white, and I want more white at the bottom. But like I said, we, we're going to add a little bit of blue. So I'm going to add the white first. I know that's hard to see, but that's okay. We want to add a bunch of white down here. It doesn't need to be a perfectly straight line, so don't worry about that either. Okay, it can be a nice transition. And then I'm just going to take just a little bit of blue, just a tip, just a tip. And I'm going to blend that through. I want this to look almost like ice. Now, if you added too much, that's okay. Let it dry and you can go back on top with white. White makes an excellent eraser. So we're going to paint, 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 smoothing it out so my bottom looks like ice and my top looks at, like sky, even though I use the same brush stroke. So more white at the bottom and more blue at the top. Then we're going to let it dry. You could use a hair dryer to let it dry, or you can pause this video and start it up when this whole thing is dry. You can tell it's dry if you look at the side, if you're looking at it from this angle. If it's still shiny, it's still wet, so just give it another minute. Acrylic does dry really quick, so we don't have to wait too long. Okay, now our canvas is dry and we are ready to um, create our penguin on top. I added um, black and white to my tray and a little bit of yellow, so I'm ready to, with those colors too. Now I want you to use a pencil to sketch out your penguin. I'm going to use a Sharpie just so that you can see it on our canvas. Um, draw light until you get it right. If you do make a mistake, we can um, paint over it. You can try to erase it with an eraser. Otherwise, we'll just paint over it with some of the paint. So I want you to really think about how big you want your penguin. I have a fist here and a fist here. We want to take up space. So we really want our penguin to be nice and big. Now this is my horizon line, right? So we have the sky and the ground where that it meets is the horizon line. So I want to make sure that my penguin is sitting on earth. We don't want them floating in the sky, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is use my art element oval. You could use a circle too, that would work. And I want to draw a pretty big oval for my head shape. Then I want to draw a second oval. Now my penguin isn't perfect and that's okay. I don't want my penguin to be a perfect shape. It, we never have such, there is no such thing as perfect in art, right? All right, from here, we wanna be really careful with how we add um, the next lines. We're gonna just sketch it out so that we can paint in between. 
So right here, I'm gonna draw a second line for my belly. I'm gonna do two curved lines. This one's gonna come up and I'm just gonna softly arc it down so I have a cute little flapper. And then this side, I'm gonna do my flapper down. So it's just adding a curved line. All right, now it depends on how you want your cute little feet. You can think about your feet just as lines as well. Maybe one's resting on the ground, maybe one's a little bit more of a happy foot. That creates a little bit of movement for your penguin. All right, now I wanna sketch out my face, okay? Now we're gonna be painting inside of here, so it's okay if we kind of lose it with our, um, with, with our drawing, okay? So I just wanna sketch out a little bit where we want our nose. From the nose, I'm gonna do an arced line up and another arced line up towards the circle. Now I'm not gonna add my eyes right now because we are going to paint those in, okay? We'll do some painting, let it dry, and then we'll paint some more. So are you ready? I'm gonna dry out my paintbrush. In case your paintbrush was super dry, let's soften those bristles again. So tap, tap, tap in the water. And I cleaned my water out too while I was letting things dry. Oh, and then look at, I spilled some water on my paint, on my canvas too, that's okay. No worries, and look at, ah, that's right where my snow is gonna be. So no worries if you made a little mistake. So now that this canvas is dry, I can paint right on top for my white face. And you just wanna get it as close to your lines as possible. Now it's pulling in some of those blues. I'm okay with that because that gives a little bit more texture feeling for your penguin. If you don't like how that looks, paint it once, let it dry, and then do a second coat of white and you'll get more of that super ultra white. So I wanna do my face white. And I'm just going back, I'm trying to do a really smooth brush stroke with my penguin. So I'm gonna do my face and then I'm gonna do my belly. I am gonna do that white as well. I gotta reload a little bit of my paint. So I'm just adding a little bit more paint onto my area and now I'm, this was already white, but you know what? I'm gonna do it again. And then once you have that belly and the face painted white, we're gonna clean out our paintbrush. So if I am going too fast, once you have yours painted, I'll probably finish before you, which is fine. Pause it and then you can uh, wait until the whole family is done, and then you can go on to the next step. So we want to paint the face and the belly. Now I'm ready to go to the black. So I really wanna clean out my paintbrush. So again, if you needed to clean out your water, I'm okay with that. It's a little bit cloudy and that's fine with me. Black covers pretty well. So I'm just gonna gently press onto the bottom, I don't wanna force it. You don't want to push really hard. I want to clean out my paintbrush with my paper towel so it's pretty clean. My bristles are soft, softened so I'm ready to go. Now, black. Oh yeah, yeah. Less is more with black. We do not want to overload our brush. So 
dip it into your paint, maybe even blot it, okay? So on the side, we don't need a lot of black. For the black, we want to do this face right in the middle. So black is hard to take away. This is my warning with black. It's really hard to take away. It can be done, but we have to let it dry and add white, let it dry and add white. So we really want to be careful with black. Less is more. We can always add more black, but it is pretty hard to take it away, okay? So let's be really cautious with it. Now, I know you have a pencil line right there. <clears throat> Mine had that black line because of my Sharpie. So I am going to add a line all the way across. Now, here is another idea for you, okay? If you want this to be a super thin line, you could wait till your whole painting is dry and you could add a Sharpie line. That's an idea. I sometimes like turning my canvas. So don't be afraid to turn it. So you get a nice precise line. We don't say perfect around here. We say precise. There is no such thing as perfect art, right? All right, so I have my head. Now I want to do my cute little fins, or flippers. Oh my goodness, mine's got a big belly. I kind of like my cute little big belly right there. And a flipper up here. And then we're gonna let this dry again. We're gonna do some of the face. But you know, I wanna make sure that before I go on to the flippers down here in the face. I want to make sure everything's nice and dry. That way I don't smear anything. So you just want to get the white done and the black part done. And then we are going to pause it again, okay? So let this guy dry again. You could use a, um, a hair dryer and use a hair dryer to get it dry if you wanna go a little bit quicker. Now I'm okay with my blue right there in the face, but if you are not, let it dry and do another coat of white. And then I will see you back here and when everything's dry and we'll start adding those details to the face. All right, my penguin is ready for the next step. I added a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the red. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of levels that you can do for the next step. I'm gonna soften my bristles up. Make sure I dab any of the excess water off. Level one, level one. Go ahead and take just a little bit of yellow. Now, with that yellow, you wanna add just a touch of white. And because we are going right back on to that blue, we want a little bit of white in there. So we can mix it right on the side of your paper plate. And then we wanna dab off that excess again, okay? So if you look at my brush, it doesn't have a ton of paint on there. And this is a level one. Level one is you are just going straight on with your nose. You're gonna go ahead and paint it yellow. You can also do the same thing. Level one, go ahead and paint your cute little flippers. A little happy feet down here. We'll paint those yellow too. That will be our level one. Now, if you're up for the challenge, and I have a feeling I'm gonna have a lot of friends that are up for the challenge. You could just paint those yellow just like I did. If you like it, keep it. 
if you want, what we're going to do is take just a touch of that red, just a touch, and mix it with the yellow. We can get that nice secondary color, that orange. I'm going to put just a little bit more yellow in there so I get kind of a lighter orange, okay? So you can, again, get some of that excess off. I have one piece that just fell on there. Okay. And then you can add, you could do the whole beak orange, or you could add just a little bit of orange at the tops of the feet. And you could blend the orange and the yellow, or you could paint the whole thing orange either, or up to you. I kind of like the blending. I think that's looking pretty cool. But you could do the whole thing orange. You could do the whole thing yellow. Either way, it looks really cute. Again, if you overdo it, no worries. We can let it dry and add some white right up on top, okay? Now for my eye, what I'm going to do, I'm getting some of that excess off. I didn't add my eyes before because I wanted to make sure that my white was nice and dry. So now that my white is nice and dry, I'm going to clean off my yellow, get some of that excess off, and oh, that black. Can I give you that warning on black again? A little goes a long way, so roll it around on your plate so you only have a little bit. Now, my friends, we can do the eye however you want. These are your penguins. So if you want to get cute and creative with it, go for it. But I'm going to make the eyes pretty small to begin with, okay? Because I can always make them bigger, right? We don't want to add a ton of black paint on there because yikes a rooser. It's hard to take it away. You know what another option is? Wait till it completely dries and add that Sharpie. You could just draw your eyes in with Sharpie. You get a little bit more of a precise eye if you do it with Sharpie. Because I know these brushes are a little thick. So you could do one eye winking. You could do them. I know you guys have such creative ways to do eyes. I want you to make your eyes however you want. I'm just going to do a very simple oval. And then I'm going to let them dry. And I'm going to add a little bit of a reflection in it to give a really cute little expression. Now, this part's dry. This part's dry. So I'm going to clean off my brush. And I'm going to show you some extras that you can do. Our penguin, we could sign it and be done, couldn't we? Super cute penguin right now. I'm going to do a couple of different extras. Since it's Valentine's Day, option number one. <clears throat> I'm going to take my red and I'm going to paint a cute heart. Over and floating, because guess what? This is going to be a balloon. So I'm going to make a heart shape. Now you could add, because that's just turning a little bit purple, right? Maybe you like that. Or what you could do is add a little bit of white to your red, and that will help cover some of that purpley color. You can make your balloon as big or as little as you want. Don't, don't be afraid to turn your canvas. And we're just curving it around. I'm going to make this side a little bit bigger. And then we're going to let that guy dry. At the very bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to really push down on my bristles so it's flat. I get that nice flat edge. And I'm just going to stamp, stamp, so that I have a nice little holder right where the balloon, my heart balloon, is um, tied at the bottom. Now I'm going to let that dry, okay? <clears throat> now... 
Maybe you don't want to add a heart balloon. That's okay. We could make these a nice little winter scene. You could add a snowball right there. I'm going to actually add the snowball on this side so you can kind of see how it's done. So what I want to do now, we want to have clean white or that little bit of blue-ish white that we created for this part. And I'm just going to soft it, softly kind of, we want to load the brush and then unload it, right? So how I'm going to do that, I have white on my brush and then I'm going to get a lot of it off. Now I'm going to stipple or I'm going to use a point and I'm going to dab, dab, dab to get that really soft snowball effect. So maybe you want to add a couple of snowballs. Now, just like we did before, I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue at the very bottom, just to give it a little bit more effect. So if you wanted to add a snowball, awesome. You wanna do a balloon, awesome. Either way is completely fine. Now, my balloon needs to be attached. If you want that precise line again, we talk about that precise line a lot. We don't like to use that word perfect in art because there is no such thing as perfect. You could use a Sharpie. If you have that Sharpie at home and you have a grown up with you, maybe you could just add that single line so that your uh, penguin is holding the Sharpie, or I'm sorry, the line is straight up to the balloon. Super cute, right? All right, while that guy is drying, I'm gonna clean up my brush again. You guys are gonna laugh at me at this part. You ready? We're not gonna use the bristle. We're gonna use the back of the paintbrush. Look at that, it's a perfect circle. I love the back of the paintbrush. A lot of times I can get some really cool effects by using the back of the paintbrush. So again, I'm gonna go back to my white. I want that clean white, okay? And I'm gonna dab the back of my paintbrush and then I'm going to stamp, stamp, stamp. Now that's okay. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we are adding snow. And that snow always looks a little different, right? If you've ever seen that snow fall, they're always just a little bit different. So we're gonna add that snow and remember those mistakes I made earlier? Boom, boom, I have a snowflake. So I'm just gonna add a few snowflakes sporadically around. We don't wanna overdo it, but my goodness, that penguin likes snow, doesn't he? You can even go back into your snowball. That's another cool way to make a snowball. Just go stamp, stamp, stamp. I don't know, I kind of like the art and the snowball effect. I think it's kind of cute. All right, the other thing I'm going to do with the stamping, very carefully, I'm just gonna add a little reflection to his eye. I'm also gonna use the back again to draw a little line to add just a little reflection into my heart. So my balloon just shines a little bit brighter just along the edge. So good, so good. All right, now, you can fill this with whatever else you want. Is there anything else you want to add to your penguin? Go for it. Um, maybe you want to add a cute little hat. You could do that carefully. Um, or if you like it just the way it is, let it dry. Don't overdo, don't overwork your canvas. We want to let it dry. And then at the very end with the Sharpie, you can sign it at the bottom. And that means you're done with your project. I hope you guys enjoyed our quick painting. I can't wait to see these. Maybe you can take some pictures and send them to me. Um, I hope you enjoyed your Valentine's Day with your family. See you, everybody.